Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate land website, www thelandgeek.com. And today I'm excited to learn about something kind of new, kind of different, kind of cool in the sense that I've really never delved very deep into the subject. And my guest today is truly an expert, Scott Maurer. I hope I'm, am I pronouncing that right, Scott? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly correct, Mark. Good job. Scott Maurer is the director of business development for Advanta IRA Services. Advanta specializes in administering self-directed IRA and retirement accounts. You can, of course, invest in raw land with a self-directed IRA. Scott has worked for Advanta for uh, since 2006 and is a frequent speaker and lecturer on the topic of self-directed IRAs and using retirement funds to invest in real estate and other alternative assets. We'll have to talk about some of those alternative assets. Sure. Scott is also an attorney. Don't, don't, don't get mad at him. That, don't you know? It's okay. We had a member of the Florida Bar, although he does not give legal advice to advance the clients. I, you know, it's always fun to haze the attorneys. Scott Maurer, how are you? I'm very good, Mark. How are you doing? Thanks for having me today. Yeah, no, my pleasure. So uh, this is great. Let's get into it. You know, I think I talked to you about this, uh, you know, before you came on. I've never invested in a self-directed IRA, not because, you know, our returns are huge. We're talking about 300%. To a thousand percent margins, but I've never done it through a self-directed IRA simply because I thought the fees were too high and okay. would and would would eat up my margins. So, can you kind of walk me through that? Like how? Like first of all, how does this thing get set up? Why do people do it? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? What's going on with these self-directed IRAs? Sure. Well, I'll start off on one, Mark. A lot of people just uh, – it's not uncommon that a lot of people, this is something that is very new to them. It's only about 90 – and only about four, well, I should say, 95% of IRAs or retirement accounts in this country are not invested in alternative investments. They're in CDs. They're in money markets. They're in uh, mutual funds, stocks, etc. So it's not something that's very common just because I think a lot of people don't know about it. Um, but it is allowable, and that's kind of surprising when people say, well, I – Real estate can't be held in an IRA because I can't do that through Schwab or I can't do it through Fidelity. But the IRS rules when it comes to investing with your IRA funds do allow for you to invest in real estate, invest in private notes, and a lot of other things we can talk about as well. And any type of real estate, whether it's a piece of rental property, a rehab, or a piece of raw land, as you're, as you're very familiar with, all can be held within an IRA account. You just have to have the right custodian an administrator who's willing to hold that type of asset. And that's the niche we serve in the market is that we are not a broker dealer. We don't sell any mutual funds. We don't sell stocks. We just allow people to use their retirement funds and invest in these different assets. And the process, Mark, you asked is very simple. It's a matter of establishing an IRA account with a firm like ourselves and then just transferring money from your current IRA uh, whether it's a Fidelity, Schwab, Smith, Barney, it doesn't matter. Just moving that account over. It's a non-taxable, non-reportable event to move money from one IRA to another. And then once we have the funds in the account, you direct us to buy that particular piece of land in the IRA. And we work with you and work with the title company all the way through the process to make sure that when you ultimately purchase that lot or that piece of that piece of property, that the owner's name, rather than being, say, Mark Podolsky, Mark Podolsky as the owner, it would be Advanta IRA for benefit of Mark Podolsky's IRA as the purchaser. So that demonstrates to the IRS that you have used your IRA to invest in real estate as opposed to investing in mutual funds. Now, the huge benefit of investing through your IRA is that whatever gains you make, you said you're making you know 300% uh, or, or uh, type margins and returns on the account, that money all comes back into the IRA completely tax-free or tax-deferred depending on the type of IRA. So as you are investing and reinvesting in land, you are not going to pay any taxes as you go, which allows you to build your account much more quickly um, and, and not have to you know, suffer the, the capital gains or the income taxes due ordinarily. IRAs do not pay taxes on their gains. 
Right, right. But Scott, you know, the like our land niche, we might buy 500 properties a year. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, we're talking about big volume. We're not talking about maybe five to 10 houses. So what are the fees per well, transaction? Or can I, can I buy 500 and sell 500 in a year? And how would that work? How would that look? Well, here's kind of the, the, the two ways you could do it. We do have clients who buy their, each asset uh, within each IRA and have us handling the closings, and, and that would get expensive. No, I'm not going not gonna to lie or sugarcoat it. If you're ha- paying us for each transaction, uh, we charge a transaction fee of 95 or $145 per transaction to buy each piece of real estate, and we have an uh, annual record keeping fee that is is based on the total value of the account. So if you're for each property you purchase, that certainly could get expensive. But one way I have seen people uh, when you're looking to make an inve- making multiple investments is they have created essentially an LLC or maybe a private trust that is owned by their IRA. And so instead of having us send money for each closing, they instead have us send their IRA funds, let's say they have 100000 in an IRA, just send all 100000 into an LLC that they control or have somebody else control, and they can then use that LLC to buy and sell all of the property in and out of that LLC. And so that would save on your transaction costs because we are only going to be involved one time with one investment into that LLC, and your annual fee would just be capped at a flat $295 a year. Well, that's the way to do it. Holy yeah. cow. Why, so why aren't I doing this? <laughs> well, that I, that I don't know. <laughs> that I can't answer why someone may not be doing it, but it's, um, it certainly is available. Anyone who, it's, as far as what accounts could be self-directed, any type of IRA, whether it's a traditional uh, tax-deferred uh, kind of, quote, regular IRA, right. uh, a Roth IRA, which is a, a tax-free account, which is even better, obviously, when you're talking about the returns uh, that you're mentioning, having that money come back completely tax-free forever within a Roth. Uh, and any old 401k, any old employer plan, somebody who worked for a company for a number of years, no longer employed there, those monies can always be rolled over and moved into a self-directed IRA to invest in real estate. Okay, so now I have a SEP IRA, I have a Roth IRA, I have a regular IRA. Mm-hmm. All those I could use, correct? You could, you could. Your SEP and your traditional could be combined into the same account because they are both tax deferred accounts. You will, you will pay tax on that money down the road at some point when you retire uh, or decide to take distributions. Uh, the Roth IRA money would be kept separate because it is ta- again tax free, which means the money that's in there, whatever you grow it to, by the time you reach the age when you want to pull it out. That's all growing completely tax-free. That's why a Roth IRA is extremely popular among investors who are uh, getting big returns because every return they get is tax-free. Well, I should definitely do this through the Roth. And the great thing about our niche is we don't need to have a lot of money, right? right. Sure. So that that part's fantastic because now, okay, so I set up my Roth. What's the minimum amount I can keep adding to it each year? The, well, well, the, I said the, a maximum amount. The, the max. Maximum. There's, a, yeah. there's a maximum contribution. That's the only thing the IRS limits with IRAs in a given year is how much money you can contribute out of your pocket. There is no limitation on the earnings, uh, but you can only contribute, for instance, for a traditional or a Roth IRA, you can contribute up to $5,500 a year uh, or 6500 if someone was over the age of 50. Okay, that's good. Now, if you have a SEP IRA, you can actually contribute up to 25% of your annual uh, earned income in a given year, so your W-2 or your Schedule C income, you can contribute up to 25% of that amount to a maximum of $52,000 a year. So the SEP, you can obviously get a lot more money in there in a given year to, to give you more to work with initially. Right, right. So now the transfer process, can I transfer a percentage of funds? You or certainly can. I can't. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We have a lot of clients. In fact, most of our client base, it's it's not an all or nothing approach with them with the self direction. They have accounts at at a, at a with a bank or with a brokerage firm, and they just move over a portion of what they need for the deal they look, wish to get started. So if someone was saying, "Well, I have a hundred thousand in my IRA, and I really only want to use fifty of it uh, to start towards these land purchases," they only need to move over the fifty thousand dollars and leave the other amount where it's at. Um, and then use that fifty thousand within the self-directed IRA to buy property and and grow it, grow that portion of the account from there. 
they can if they sell all the land and, and don't want to purchase anymore they can always transfer it right back or in the hopefully in a, in a different sense maybe you'd say hey i would like to use actually more of this money uh, and move more money at a later date so you you're allowed to transfer between iras as often and whenever you'd like even even a roth i could transfer a roth to a you could transfer Roth to Roth. Uh, it just has to go to the same account. So you could move from you know, Roth to Roth or traditional to traditional. Now, one kind of maybe what you're getting out there, if you're looking and say, I have some money in a traditional IRA, and Scott just said a Roth IRA that was tax-free, so that, that sounds better right. uh, than tax-deferred. You can move money from a traditional to a Roth uh, by way of what they call a conversion, and that is moving the money from the tax-deferred traditional to the tax-free Roth. You have to pay the taxes, though, now on the amount of money that you move over. So if you were to convert 50000 from your traditional to the Roth, you will pay taxes this year on that 50000 that you move into the Roth. Can I do that? Could I put that much in? You can do a conversion for as much as you want, kind of a, a let's say, a slightly sarcastic way of looking at it. But the government's not going to complain if you convert your traditional IRA to a Roth, the whole amount, and pay taxes now on that whole thing. Well, wouldn't that so, be wouldn't that be advantageous to do it? I mean, I guess it depends on the amount and how well, much, depends, how, how yeah, long you're going to be able to invest. It's definitely an individual circumstance to decide. You know, how much of a tax hit are you willing to take this year to do that? Because um, it's yeah, it's going to be a tax hit to you personally, but then going forward, it's going to be completely tax free. So I, whenever I talk to a client about a conversion, I always want to get your tax advisor involved uh, so you know what tax bracket you're at, what the well, how much you're looking at in actual tax that you might pay before you do that conversion. But once you do it and you pay the tax, that money is now growing tax-free forever. Okay, unbelievable. So let's say, for example, I'm investing in land, but then I see, oh, here's a great note deal that I could buy. Mm-hmm. That's also, let's say, attached to land because if I have to uh, foreclose on the note, I know how to sell the land. Can, exactly. I, can I mix assets, asset you- classes in that IRA? You certainly can. Just as if you were you were mixing different type of mutual funds or different types of stocks, you can hold any type of asset within a self-directed IRA. Now, the, there's only a few restrictions the IRS has when it comes to uh, self-directed investing. Um, the two types of assets you can't purchase are either collectibles or life insurance. Now, collectibles would include your antiques, your artwork, uh, things of that nature. And the other restriction is on who your IRA can transact with. Your IRA is prohibited from transacting with yourself, your spouse, your parents and grandparents, your kids and grandkids, and any, um, any, any entity that is owned or controlled by one of those individuals. So if you already owned a piece of land personally, you, the laws do not allow you to sell it to your IRA. Likewise, if you had money in your IRA, you cannot lend it to yourself or a disqualified person. But if you're dealing with anyone that's unrelated to you, uh, there's really no limitation on if you're buying real estate from them, uh, whether it's raw land or a rental property, uh, if you are looking at doing a loan to them and simply having them make their loan payments instead of paying a bank, they pay your IRA, whatever terms and interests that you have established with them. Okay, so I can't take my current note portfolio and then transfer that or a portion of that to an IRA right now. I'm, I'd be starting from scratch with those assets. Correct. You'd have basically cash in the IRA that you're starting and, and wanting to then buy kind of new notes or new property. Anything you already own is not eligible to be put inside your IRA. Okay, so the market dri- you know, the market drops for whatever reason, you know, we go back down to 2008 and I need cash, Scott. I need cash. <laughs> I can't I can't take it out, correct? Uh, without being what would be the penalty? I mean, Look, you know, let's say, let's say, you know, I started with eight thousand dollars and I built that up to over a hundred thousand dollars, but now all of a sudden, um, you know, I I want to be able to take a little bit of some of my chips off the table for something else, right? What right. Ha- what happens? Well, I, mean, I guess quite true. you're talking about the IRA in general. Just if you have if you have the money in the IRA um, and you and you sell, let's say you sold the property, so now you're sitting, you do, would just be sitting in cash. Right. Um, 
you can do whatever you want with that. You could go buy more property. You could put the money in a savings account at a bank. You could put it uh, in mutual funds or stock. You're not going to have any limitation on what you wanted to do there. If you ever wanted to pull money out, though, for yourself, and this is kind of one of the questions you were asking, right. said, hey, I'm, I'm a little light on cash personally. I need some of that money in the IRA. If you take money out of an IRA prior to age 59 and a half, uh, you were hit with a 10% penalty. Okay. And if it's a regular IRA, you also are going to pay income tax on the money that comes out. So typically not a smart <laughs> no, no, financial generally, move. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when you talk to any financial advisor or CPA, if someone is in uh, somewhat of financial difficulty, usually a 401k or an IRA is, is the last place uh, that someone would look because obviously you, don't, you want to try not to touch your retirement until you need it. Right. Uh, also because of the taxes and penalties that would then be due. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So why isn't everyone doing this? Because if you look at the statistics, wouldn't our returns be higher in real estate over the long term than stocks and bonds and mutual funds where, let's face it, most people have absolutely no control? I mean, <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're some kind of insider, you know, you're, you really don't know what's going on with any company. And I, what was that book? Was it uh, Flash, Flash Traders or Flash Boys or – Sure. Yeah. You know what I'm talking uh, about? I could tell you to, to the answer the answer to the question on why the the people that don't do it, I think there's a couple reasons. One simply is they don't know about it, that it's possible. Because a lot of people again go to their financial advisor who doesn't tell them. You know, if you have an advisor with a Raymond James, they're not gonna tell you that if you'd like you can invest in real estate because they don't hold that asset. So they're not they're not gonna advertise that as a possibility. Right. Uh, another reason would be someone just not feeling comfortable with that investment. Uh, if you brought someone in off the street who knew who knew nothing about real estate, you know they're probably not going to do as well as you or the people listening to the podcast are going to do because they don't have uh, the background or the knowledge in that industry to make those types of investments. Right, um, right. So that might be why other people do it. But if you if you have a background in real estate and you know how to make money in real estate and make a, a very good and consistent return, then I think you definitely should be taking a look at the IRA and what could you do there. What is your IRA doing now where it's sitting? Uh, could you be doing much better with it by self-directing it and investing in real estate? I see. Well, what if somebody wanted to invest just with a, uh, like a professional? Um, you know, they got $100,000 in the IRA. They don't really want to do it themselves, but mm-hmm. they'd like a professional to go out and maybe buy them, you know, a single family home with a renter in it or, uh, you know, get returns with me with raw land, something like that. Is that a viable strategy? It certainly is, and it's again, it's all it depends on the individual uh, what they're what they're looking at doing. You could structure I me, and you're what you just described. An investor could come to you, Mark, and say, "Hey, I'll just how about I just lend you money, and you go use that cash to buy real estate, and all I all I want you to do is pay me ten percent, right, or eight percent, or whatever whatever you agree on." Um, and they could so they would just simply have a loan or a mortgage inside their IRA. They could also, though, have you go out and help them find the property, and maybe you, they pay you a finder's fee or some type of commission for finding these properties for them as well. That is certainly possible and, and, and legal to do as well. Interesting. Okay. Now, are there any paperwork issues as far as you, the deed and the transfers, um, like we talked about in the beginning? Are there, is there going to be anything that's going to slow up my transactions because I'm doing this through a self-directed IRA? There shouldn't be. And again, it's going to depend on how ultimately someone someone's structured. If they were simply holding the IRA, having the IRA hold title to the real estate, uh, there is a closing process. We actually sign off on the closing documents and send money from the IRA. But this can all be certainly accomplished through email and fax. It's really just a matter of making sure that the closing agent understands that the buyer is an IRA account. And we send them all of the instructions on, on how the, the deed and the closing documents need to read. And at closing time, we simply issue uh, the cash from their IRA account. It's a, it's a very simple transaction. It's a cash purchase, um, so there's no complications. It's just a different titling that goes on the deed. Now, if you're using an LLC, right. um, rather than having the IRA on the title, you're going to have your LLC uh, on title to that particular asset, and you're going to be handling and signing off on the closing documents and holding everything within the LLC. Now, if you do decide to use an LLC, you just have to make sure, again, that you don't commingle any personal money in there. You want to keep it all IRA funds. Right. And you can't pay yourself any type of compensation for acting as a manager. It has to be simply just you signing checks and making decisions. But all of the income and expenses related to the investment must come into or be paid out of the IRA account. So the annual, if you have any tax bills, 
the IRA has to pay that tax bill. Uh, but if you lease the property for any reason, any income received goes back into the IRA as well. Okay, so you would recommend then setting up a separate LLC just for making these real estate transactions through your self-directed IRA. Nothing gets commingled. You don't do anything except work within that LLC for your land investments and paying your property taxes and you know managing your notes, et cetera, et cetera. That's that's correct. I mean, it, it's and again, it's up to an individual. If they didn't feel comfortable with the LLC and wanted to have us hold on to everything, we can certainly do that. Um, but if you do decide to go the LLC route, you would it would have to be a brand new LLC entity. You could not use an existing LLC that you had. It would have to be a kind of brand new startup from scratch LLC that is owned strictly by your IRA, and that's the only money that goes into that account. Okay, so I want to do that now. Do I go to you and say, okay, Scott, help me set up this? LLC strictly for investing through IRA f- funds, or do I go and go to like a legal Zoom, set up an IRA, and then come to you? Well, you can certainly go to. We don't set up the uh, again, even though I'm an attorney, and you can uh, hopefully keep the jokes at bay here for a second. But uh, I don't. <laughs> I won't do any. Uh, I don't do any of the LLC setups, and our company can't do any of the legal paperwork. So we don't handle the real estate closings. We don't handle setting up an LLC. You could certainly go to a legal Zoom. Or I know of a few attorneys um, that we work with that, that can work and know what a self-directed IRA is and know the process, and they might charge you know four or five hundred dollars or so to get that LLC established and set up, and give you the appropriate paperwork to get started. Okay, is that the way to go then? Someone who already knows about the self-directed it's, IRA. It's- we strongly suggest it. We don't require it. So if you know, there's there's plenty of individuals out there who don't have formal legal training who are perfectly capable and knowledgeable to set up an LLC on their own and draft an operating agreement. That's the document that we would want to see. Um, we suggest, though, an attorney, someone who's familiar with self-directed IRAs, just so they can give you the proper guidance on what you should or shouldn't be doing uh, and answer your questions within that aspect. But we don't. Re- again, we don't. We're not going to require it. Okay. So I could, you know, be kind of frugal about it and go to like a legal zoom and spend half the money correct sure. okay so there, there's there wouldn't be any repercussions of that no we're not gonna i mean we're gonna we're basically gonna look when we ever we make an investment whether it's into a piece of property or we're making an investment uh into an llc uh, we're just looking at the documentation to make sure that the ira is properly listed as the owner so on a deed it would be advanced ira services you know for benefit of mark podolsky's ira uh, that would be on a deed if you're buying property. If you're investing in the LLC, we just want to see that the member, the owner in the LLC, is listed as advanced IRA services for benefit of Mark Podolsky's IRA. I see. Now, what about a 529 plan? Like, I've got my kids, you know, I, every month I'm investing in my, five, my mm-hmm. kids' 529. I could get so much better returns if I could just invest raw land into, their, into that 529. You could, and unfortunately, though, the rules for 529 plans don't allow for self-directing of a 529, uh, because that's each each state kind of sets up the different investment possibilities, and generally, I don't think the states allow for that. What is possible, though, is that you can set up and self-direct what's called an ES, the old Coverdell, they were called Coverdell IRAs, but they're now called uh, education savings accounts. You can contribute up to $2,000 per year. For a, ch- for a child into an ESA account and then self-direct that and use that ESA account to invest in real estate. And the gains that come back in come back into the ESA tax-deferred. Tax-deferred, okay. Initially. Just like the you, 529, correct? Right. But at the but then when you, do the, in, uh, when you take the money out of the ESA account for qualified education expenses, it does come out tax-free. Ta- so okay, so it's tax-free. Books. Right. Okay, great. So, yeah, it functions a little bit like a 529, but it's the ESA, and you can only put in a maximum of $2,000 per year per child uh, into an ESA. Um, but then again, yeah, you certainly can self-direct it. There's no limitation on the earnings, and when it, whatever you pull out for education does come out tax-free down the line. Wow. A- after this podcast, we're going to have to have a serious talk. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine. You know how to reach me. Yeah. So now for the ESA – Again, does it? Can I do it through that same LLC, or now do I need to create a separate LLC? You would probably the, the to make things. I can tell you the easiest thing to do is to create a separate LLC for that ESA account, uh, just to keep the ESA and keep the IRA separate. It's permissible and possible to combine them, but it would have to be done all at the same time. You know, having basically your regular IRA own maybe ninety percent of the LLC and have the ESA, for instance, own ten percent. 
Um, but you have to keep, then keep those percentages static, and that's kind of where it can get tricky down the line if you want to make additional contributions from your own pocket. So uh, that part I kind of do recommend in a sense to keep maybe two LLCs and keep them separate. I see. And the fees, are they going to be the same? Roughly, yes. I mean, our fee, our annual fee, well, just to quickly, it's a $50 one-time fee to open an account and a one-time $95 fee to, to move the money into an LLC. Uh, then our annual fee for an LLC tops out at $295 a year. I see. Um, if, you're starting, if you're just starting out with an ESA and your account's, say, under 15000 total, uh, our minimum fee is $195 a year. And then, but again, you're going to cap out, though, at 295 if you're investing with an LLC. I see. Now, um, I'm going to put you on the spot here, and I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but why go to Advanta versus your competition? Because I know there's a couple other big players out there in self-directed IRAs. What is, besides you know dealing with, obviously, you, sure. what, what's your competitive advantage? I think our competitive advantage is simply our service. There's a lot of companies out there that are uh, maybe larger in a sense. They have they have more accounts. They have uh, bigger operations. But I think when that happens, as, as we've heard from their clients, is you get lost in the shuffle. Uh, with Advanta, you get assigned an account manager. So if you establish an account, you get the same person to ask any question you need regarding your account. Uh, and again, I think that gives us a definite customer service advantage that people who work with us, either whether they're they're local and they can walk in our office and sit down, uh, or even if they're not, uh, they're, they're someone out and they're just simply calling, they really feel like they get to know us because they're dealing with the same person every time. They're not calling an 800 number and kind of getting someone who looks their account up in the system and sees who the last person they talked to was and, and try to help them out from there. You're going to get somebody on the phone who knows exactly um, what they need from you, that they're still waiting on a form, maybe you're waiting on something else. Um, and so you call them and they know, oh, so nice to talk to you, Mr. Podolsky. If you, if you have that form or what question did you have on your account today um, or with your LLC, they're going to know exactly what it is that you're talking about. I, I really think that's our, our main competitive advantage. Uh, our fees as well, when you get into the uh, with some of the competitors, they charge the, their fees simply based on the account value. So as your account continues to grow, you're going to pay more and more. Uh, if you do use our uh, an LLC with us, the fee is simply capped at two ninety five a year, whether it's a fifty thousand dollar account or a five hundred thousand dollar account. The fee is the same. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, well that's that's a great, that's a good answer, Scott. <laughs> I practice it, so that's, that's, that's yeah, fine. that's I've good. I've before, so all right, fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot again, as I always do with all my guests. Uh, what is your tip? of the week. It could be a resource, a book, a website, something to help us, uh, something actionable to help us make money in real estate. Well, I, the, I, you, you asked me about that, and I, I thought about it, and uh, there's, a, there's a gentleman local here in, in our Tampa area that we have, we have partnered up with on seminars before, and I know he does seminars all over the country as well. His name is John Schaub, and that's uh, last name is spelled S-C-H-A-U-B. He wrote a book years ago called Building Wealth one house at a time. It's kind of it's more more for bar, buying rental properties, but that's kind of his his philosophy and his theory that he teaches a class every year um, on this class and people come or on this topic. People come from all over the country, uh, but the book again is titled "Building Wealth." One House at a Time by John Schaub. It's a great read, especially for someone just getting started even, just to take things slowly and how to slowly build your wealth and not taking on too much at one at one given time possibly. Uh, I think it's a great read. It's a pretty easy read. Uh, and you can even go to John's website um, and find look him up on the Internet. Um, and he's got great resources there. He's a great speaker. He's a, he's, a, he's a friend of mine. I've been fortunate enough to be able to call him a friend because I've met, met him and, and, and worked with him many times. So uh, Building Wealth One House at a Time with John Schaub, that's definitely my, my tip of the week. All right. I'm going to have to get John Schaub on the podcast then. Uh, you, so I, you e e email him. like, you know, I just was on the Land Geek podcast, and, and this guy wants to interview you. I'm sure he'd be happy to do it. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. That, that's fantastic, although I'm, you know, I'm going to make the argument that Land investing is so much better. <laughs> well, no, John, no, I mean, no John tenants, no toilets, his, no termites. Well, no, no that's, trash. that's very, very true. But his book, I mean, his book talks about rental. But I know that John, he's a real estate investor. He invests in notes. He invests in land. He invests in a lot of different things. He's his book is just titled that. That's I just thought I'd throw that out there. But he's he's quite knowledgeable. He's been doing it for years. So I'll, I'll definitely forward uh, your name and uh, number and his name to you as well. Look him up, and, and I'll definitely make the recommendation he come on your podcast. I will, actually, I like the title. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a book called Building Wealth One Parcel. <laughs> there you go. Through your, through your self-directed IRA. 
Perfect, with, and I'll write the with, forward with, for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, with Scott Maurer at Advanta IRA Services. So, um, all right, well, my tip of the week is obviously if you're in that position where you need to start building up your retirement funds, which I would think everyone who's listening to this podcast would be, it only makes sense to grow that self-directed IRA tax-free or tax-deferred. And since the majority of the people that are listening to this podcast know how to do this through investing in raw land, it only makes sense to set up that separate LLC and contact Scott and go to advantaira.com. They've got educational webinars. And look, call Scott directly and he'll, he'll give you the lowdown just like he did uh, today. Um, Scott, how do we get in touch with you sure today. you can you can reach me 800 number is 800 425 0653 and my extension is 1123 uh, I'd certainly be happy to talk to anyone, especially when you get into the nitty gritty with, I mean, obviously the people that are listening here, they got the investment side down. They probably need a little bit more qu- uh, questions and help with the nitty gritty of which type of IRA possibly or how does the process work. And that's something where you're certainly uh, able and willing and, 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 and would want to help people through that process. That is what we uh, are, again, our service is, is what is paramount to us and what, how we help our clients. So uh, please, yeah, again, 800-425-0653. And my name is Scott Maurer. All right, Scott. Well, I'm going to put that in the show notes as well. So if anyone's listening, they don't have to get in a car accident you know, <laughs> okay. and, and, try to, and try to write it down. All right. Well, Scott, I really appreciate you taking time today to you know, really educate myself and the Lange community on self-directed IRAs. You know, We didn't even get into the, to the topic of what other alternative assets there are besides Real estate notes, but that's that's primarily our business. But just quickly, we see people invest in physical gold and silver. Uh, people doing futures and forex trading. Uh, people investing in private companies. You know, uh, could be a private insurance company raising capital. Can't do that same investment through a Schwab account, but you could certainly do it through a self-directed account. So we a lot a lot of very interesting things as well that we see. That's great. That's great. All right. Well, I want to thank you again, and you know, I'd love to have you back. I'd, I'd be happy to anytime, Mark. I really appreciate you. I want to thank you for inviting me on. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. Well, Scott Maurer from Advanta IRA, uh, thanks again. And I want to remind all the listeners, look, learn more. Go to www.thelanegeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And, of course, get this always informative and educational Land Geek podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And look, do me a favor. Scott and I aren't doing this just for the fun of it. We want to get some feedback. And leave us a a comment on iTunes. And if you do it, I'm going to bribe you. I'm going to send you out the uh, Passive Income Launch Kit as well for free. Just send me or support at thelandgeek.com a little email saying, hey, I left you a comment on iTunes. We'll go ahead and get out that Passive Income Launch Kit uh, out to you for free. And of course, if you want to acquire some Wholesale land, give me some love. Go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com and learn more there. So, Scott, thanks again. and Thank you, Mark. Th- I want to thank everybody from the Land Geek community listening, and we'll see everybody next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Land Geek.